Mr. Ashok Botra, CFO. I would like to invite Mr. Dinesh Odani, AGM Finance, to initiate uh, with the opening remarks, post which we will have a QA and a session. Over to you, Dinesh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay ji. Good evening, everyone. Please note that a copy of our disclosures is available on the investor section of our website as well as the stock exchanges. Please do note that anything said on this call which reflects our outlook towards the future or which could be construed as a forward-looking statement must be reviewed in conjunction with the risk that the company faces in terms of uncertainty. With that, I would like to hand over the floor to our MD, Mr. Chintan Shah, for his initial comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dinesh Ji. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the management of Tatwa Chintan Pharma Care Limited, I welcome you all to the Q3 nine months FY23 earnings call of Tatwa Chintan Pharma Care Limited. Wishing you all a very happy, healthy, and prosperous 2023. I believe you got a chance to go through the investor presentation uploaded on the stock exchanges as well as the company's website. To start with, I would like to brief you with the financial numbers. During this quarter, the company reported a revenue from operations of rupees 1206 million, a growth of 15% year on year and 34% Q on Q respectively. As anticipated, improved offtake in SDA segment is reflected in numbers of this quarter. EBITDA during this quarter was at 179 million, a decline of 25% year on year and a growth of 60% Q on Q respectively. EBITDA includes forex gain of 0.7 million. So the operational EBITDA during the current quarter is 178.43 million, which translates into EBITDA margin of 14.79%. Net profit after tax was 116 million, a decline of 49% year on year and a growth of 63% quarter on quarter basis. There have been few positives for the business this quarter, like a marginal decline in power and fuel cost and a significant drop in shipping cost beginning mid-November. Also since December, the solvent prices have started to rationalize, though the price of basic chemicals and commodities still continue to remain very high. We have witnessed rampant currency fluctuations across various geographies this quarter, particularly adverse movements in Euro and Yen, keeping in mind our long-term partnerships and associations with select key customers belonging to these geographies, we opted to support them during these adverse times and try to return their favors from the past. In certain cases, we marginally reduced the prices and in few cases opted not to ask for price increase and absorb certain increased cost ourselves. During the quarter, the inventory at consolidated levels have come down from 2030 to 1,762 million. Now let us talk about each product categories and the key developments that took place during this quarter. PTCs have registered revenue of 325 million in this quarter and nine months revenue of 1,054 million, contributing 35% of the revenue and a growth of 55% year-on-year basis during nine months FY23. Demand from BTCs from various user industries continue to remain robust. Major supplies of BTCs are in overseas market. Electrolyte salts have registered revenue of 41 million in this quarter and nine months revenue of 156 million contributing 5% of the revenue and a growth of 357% year-on-year basis during nine months. As informed earlier, the uptake from one of our large customers is on hold as they are working on de-bottlenecking uh, de their productivity and we expect them to resume their uptake from the end of June 23. We have supplied multiple electrolyte salts samples for approval to a new global potential customer and are awaiting for their approval. During the quarter, we have some significant achievements in this area of electrolytes. We successfully got our first approval 
for high purity electrolyte solutions from R&D scale. In current month, that is January 23, we have shipped the first small scale trial order from our pilot plant, successfully meeting the most stringent quality requirements. We anticipate getting a formal approval followed by a plant scale trial order to be executed in June 2023. We have received yet another customer's request for supply of electrolyte solutions. We shall be sending out R&D scale samples in February 23. With increasing demands for supercapacitors and energy storage systems, we are confident to deliver exponential growth in this segment over the coming next three years. Pharma and agro intermediates and specialty chemicals have registered a revenue of 264 million during the quarter and nine months revenue of 1036 million, contributing 35% of the revenue and a growth of 36% year on year basis during nine months. In monogline, the final inspection of the pilot stage equipment for continuous flow chemistry is finally under process and we expect to receive the equipment by first week of February. Post installation, we will be able to finally start the most much awaited trials. As discussed earlier, for our second product on continuous flow basis, we have received the quality approval from our small scale plant trial material. Now we have been requested by the customer for a full plant scale trial material. This has happened much faster than we anticipated. We plan to supply the plant scale trial material by the end of August 2023. Post successful trials, we strongly expect a very interesting opportunity to begin commercial supplies post to April 2024. Regarding a new product in the application area of metal extraction, the production has commenced for commercial supplies and we expect the first shipment to happen in February 2023. As informed during my last call about the successful completion of development of our third product on continuous flow basis, which is the key base raw material for multiple agrochemical intermediates, I am pleased to inform you that we have been allotted two projects to work on downstream agrochemical intermediates. The work on these molecules have already been initiated in our R&D. Our team has a remarkable success in development of our fourth product on continuous flow basis. The development is nearing completion. We have undertaken development of two new products on continuous flow basis recently. By demonstrating our capabilities to run specialized chemistries, we are seeing a consistent rise in the confidence and comfort of large customers to work with our company. We are very confident about the strong growth in this product category over the coming years. FDAs have registered revenue of 571 million during this quarter and nine months revenue of 728 million, contributing 24% of the revenue and a decline of 61% year on year during nine months FY23. As previously guided, the sale of SDA has seen an uptick in this quarter with demands coming from few customers. The overall demand in the market is not back to normal levels yet. We expect the demand of SDAs to remain at nearly similar levels for the next two quarters. As China boundaries have finally opened up with curtailment of government zero COVID policy, the market expects the commercial vehicle sales in China to rebound leading to growth in SDS demand from late Q2 FY24. During the quarter, we successfully supplied plant scale trial material for new SDA to a new customer, about which I had mentioned in my last call. Now we have been offered an opportunity to supply the second SDA on a plant scale trial, which shall be executed during Q4 FY23. We expect the approvals for both the SDAs by September 23. We are confident that the volumes in SDAs will rebound strongly from July onwards and we remain optimistic about increasing volumes over the coming years. Regarding flame retardants, after successful completion of plant trials, 
we are in the process of approval with various customers. We have received formal approval from two customers and are awaiting approvals from few others. We are awaiting plant scale trial orders and expect to receive them by the end of this month. This will get us going commercially and eventually scale up the volumes from Q1 2024. The key watch areas would remain how the European energy crisis rolls out over the next few months and how the demand revival for heavy duty commercial vehicles pans out. Also with the China economic opening up, it would be important to observe how quickly that business rebounds. Looking at the challenging global macroeconomic factors, it seems that business would be under demand and pressure, a demand and price pressure over the next three to six months time. Your company is working relentlessly in optimizing the processes, working closely with key customers to enhance mutual benefits and creating a path for strong growth ahead. Despite of the challenging times, we expect flattish growth for next two quarters and are confident to deliver a decent growth for the next financial year. As guided earlier, this financial year has been a tough year. Despite that, we expect to close at 523 with a revenue in excess of 400 crores, though with subdued profitability as compared to FY22 due to the known global economic factors. We are happy to inform that the CAPEX at our Dahej Assisted plant is completed and trial runs are underway. Please note that nearly 93% of the IPO funds have been utilized so far. The expansion of R&D facility at Vododra is on finishing stage. We already completed, with already completed or nearly uh, nearing completion R&D projects, having promising business potentials, dedicated infrastructure would be required to produce them commercially. Over the next few quarters, we might be looking to raise fresh capital for expansion at the new Greenfield land. The environmental clearance of the same is expected to be in place over the next couple of months. It would take at least 24 to 27 months to execute a greenfield project. We will begin the execution at a correct time. We commit ourselves to scale up the already approved or developed products at a fast pace to turn them into profitable revenue. We shall continue to work hard in developing new products using latest technology to ensure that we continuously provide high purity products and innovative solutions to our customers. With this, I conclude my remarks and hand over the call to our CFO, Mr. Ashok Botra, for taking you through the financial numbers. Thank you, sir, and good evening, everyone. I shall summarize the financial highlight for the quarter. The revenue from operation was at uh, 1206 million versus 1047 million in the FY22. That is an increase of 15% on YOY, which is largely due to recovery in the uptake of SDA. Other income declined by 67% during Q3 FY23, uh, mainly due to reduction in interest income on FDs. Uh, additionally, there was a gain of 28 million due to foreign currency translation during Q3 FY22, which led to increase in other income in that quarter. EBITDA was at 179 million versus 239 million in Q3 FY22, that is decline of 25% on YOY basis. EBITDA margin was at 15% versus 23% in Q3 FY22. The margins have been largely impacted due to change in product mix coupled with other factors which uh, MDSR has just you know, said. FAT was 116 million versus 228 million in Q3 FY22, decline of 49% on buy on buy basis. The impact is on account of higher finance costs due to higher inflation working capital and higher interest rates. Also, due to higher uh, tax on account of and of 100% tax holiday on our day facility. Now our day SCJ facility is eligible for 50% tax exemption starting from Q1 FY23 for a period of five years against earlier 100% exemption. Tax margin was at 10% versus 22% in Q3 FY22. During a nine months FY23 exports to that 295 million contributing around 
percent of the revenue. Uh, out of our net ISO proceed of 272 million, 1927 million have been utilized, that is 93 percent of the funds have been utilized as on 31 December 2022. That concludes an update on the financial highlights of Tatwa Jantan during the quarter and nine months. We shall now open the floor for question and answers. Thank you very much. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Nikhil Rungta from Nippon India Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So, three questions from my side. First is uh, to start on the revenue side. You indicated that since China is opening up, we might see good demand from uh, for as I say, uh, two to three quarters down the line. But earlier we had indicated that SDA demand to start uh, post Q3 FY23 itself. So why delay of two to three uh, quarters more? Further, China is that uh, is now opening up. So wouldn't few of our customers who were uh, not uh, uh, importing from us have started import? Okay. Good evening, Nikhil. Yeah, so as indicated, see the uptick uh, in demand of SDA is already visible. So we have a decent sales of SDA is happening in uh, the last quarter and we expect similar kind of performance even in the next two quarters as well. The issue is that we have one of our very large customers from the China geography and they are still struggling with the demand and piled up inventory because of long uh, shutdowns and very large drop in heavy duty vehicle sales in China, which has impacted their sales. So they are still sitting on inventory and indicated by them, we are expecting them to resume their procurements from May. So we anticipate from May or June onwards, we will have their strong sales also coming back and rest of the customers are definitely Bring, coming back on line as it was anticipated and going strong now. So I don't anticipate except for the China customer, most of the customers are now falling back on track and the demand is getting stronger. And this Chinese customer we expect to resume sourcing from May of 2023. Okay, okay. And so uh, coming to the margin side, uh, uh, you indicated few of the pointers that uh, we have absorbed few of the cost uh, and not passed on to the customers. But by when do you think we would be in a position to start supporting our normalized margins? Yeah, see, uh, let me explain exactly what has happened. So, uh, as you are aware, we were sitting on quite a piled up inventory on the SDA side. Uh, in terms of not only finished goods, but also it's a multi-stage chemistry. So there are inventories lying at various stages in production. So with the finished good inventory, we had no issue because the price has not been reduced or dropped for the selling price is concerned. But when it came to converting the in-process materials to finished goods, that is where the higher solvent price and the commodities price definitely hurt us. And there was no significant reason actually going back to the customer for asking for a price rise for you know solvents or commodity chemicals kind of stuff. So we had to absorb those costs ourselves. We are sitting on this inventory even which should probably last till uh, this quarter, the current quarter, the running quarter. And post that, you know, now again the solvent prices, everything is falling back in line. And commodity prices also we are expecting to fall back in line. So with this, by except for this, the next quarter, I mean the quarter Q4, we also expect similar kind of margins, maybe slightly increased margins than what we have reflected in this quarter, but more or less in the similar lines. But from April onwards, we expect to come back to a normal territory. Once we have consumed our old inventories, then we are again back to uh, zone one. Also, a lot of our phase transfer catalyst uh, uh, and also, you know, the what's required for the SDAs, these are bromine-based products. 
and there was a very rampant movement on grooming prices during this quarter so until early november the prices were pretty much stable and then the prices shot up very sharply by nearly 25 percent uh, just in a span of six seven days so which was beyond our, our control and it was a very short time to ask for any kind of a price corrections with the customer so that is where also we had because a lot of our revenues come out of grooming based products so that is where also we hurt our uh, margins during this current quarter but i think we will overcome this particularly for the face transfer catalyst we will definitely overcome this issue but sbs we will require one full quarter because we are sitting on inventory piled up inventory of uh, intermediate stages which we need to convert to finished products so there we still continue to have some impact on profitability okay so coming on to the uh, revenue side you indicated this year we might close at approximately 400 crores of revenue so if i have to look at uh, three years uh, 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 target for the revenue what type of revenue are we expecting say in fy 25 26 and in that with uh, share of electrolyte solutions increasing uh, what could be the share of electrolyte in that fy 25 26 compared to 5% now so we are basically targeting by 25 26 with see basic as i told you we have four projects on continuous flow basis which are on floor now so out of them two are getting into commercialization one is monoglyme and one is the agro intermediate which we have recently got approval we have necessary infrastructure and space at our existing plant to execute both of these projects then probably we will start running short on executing any kind of future projects and with the existing infrastructure flame retardants this to continuous flow products going on stream we expect to fully consume our capacities by 25 26 so i would estimate a revenue in a zone of about 800 upward of 800 crores to 850 crores by 25 26 you got it sir so the, uh, these were the key things from my side just one one uh, pointer from my side i mean you indicated that uh, trial runs have started in our dowage facility by when uh, the commercial production will start uh, by 1st of february that is what is the target perfect perfect sir that's all from my side thank you so much and all the best for the future thank you thank you the next question is from the line of sanjay chen from icici securities please go ahead sir Hey, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for good afternoon. Uh, my question. A uh, couple of questions from my side. Sit slightly loudly, please. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, better. Yeah. Uh, first on the uh, SD part of it. Uh, are there any price correction in the SD uh, which we have taken, or the end prices are stable uh, as we speak now? That's number no, so- one. so far all the end prices are still very much stable and uh, we are also working on see basically these are lengthy chemistries so we are working on some backward integration so that you know we can also optimize our margins further as well as pass on part of those benefits to the customer and optimize their cost as well so these are one some of very good backward integration projects that we have completed on r and d scale and which we intend to start uh, you know we have completed plant scale trials as well for this and we have submitted samples to our final customers for sdas we are awaiting their approval probably it might take 3 or 4 months to get those approvals it's not i mean it's a really time consuming affair to get these approvals in place but once we have these approvals we might even see slightly upward movement in terms of margin to the sda so probably 5 to 6 months down the line fair enough fair enough and second uh, the, we are almost into 23 uh, nearing to 24 uh, how is the tension on the euro 7 norms and are we working anything on that that's number 1 number 2 china was supposed to adopt china 6 emission b norm uh should these to even drive the higher sda volume growth over next two years yes see uh, on my i mean just i recently during my speech i mentioned about getting an opportunity to approval of a second sda 
which we expect. We are going to uh, supply this uh, commercial lot, a full container lot in this month, and we expect to have this. Uh, if we are going through with the approval, then this approval should be in place in September of 23. And this is particularly for the Euro 7 application. Also, our existing large customer has already approved our product and started uh, buying uh, the SDAs for the Euro 7 application. Of course, the volumes are much lower compared to the Euro 6, but the Euro 7 application has already kicked in. And with happening of this and also with the BS6 full implementation happening in China, yes, we expect this will have a very positive impact. And that is why I mentioned on my speech that we expect the sales to be, uh, to be robust over the next few years. This is particularly the key reason why I mentioned that. Got it, got it. Second, can you help us understand uh, segment by segment, uh, what are the new products we are working and what is the timeline are we looking? Uh, so let's start with an SDA. So we are working on uh, Euro 7, which should start in a year or so. We, we have completed our development products. of... We have completed the development part and also the commercial scale up of the Euro 7 SDAs. And uh, I mean, we supplied uh, one of them and the second one is now about to get dispatched. So with that, all potential candidates for Euro 7 SDAs are in place with the Touch as of now. Got it. And we, we did mention few more products in SDA bucket. Uh, one is high purity product. Uh, uh, when are we uh, expected to see some? So that is what we executed in uh, December. So that is for a uh, plastic application which I had talked about, recovering plastic. So that SDA has already been sent out for a commercial scale plant trial, one at a lot of material. And this also we expect to hear back from the customer by August or September of 23. Got it. And in a PASC, uh, how many products we expect to commercialize uh, over next two years, uh, say in FI24 and 25? So one large product, as I mentioned, is already getting into commercial mode. We have second product for which the SAM... So this is the first large product which I'm mentioning is on a continuous flow chemistry basis. The second product, the samples have been submitted. We expect the results of the samples by end of January, just within the next week or 10 days time. And if these are approved, then we will have an opportunity to supply for a plant scale trial by again July or August of this year. And this will again go into commercialization uh, in 24. So two products then we are again submit. We already submitted plant scale trial material for one pharmaceutical intermediate in last quarter. So that we expect to have commercialization by end of 2024. It's a little long shot because you know, the pharma approvals and those years and all those things are a little time consuming. So we expect this to be in place by end of 2024. And the one which I'm talking about the new uh, success in the continuous flow chemistry part, which uh, under which we have got opportunity to develop two agro intermediates. So we have just begun our work on developing. So we have completed our work on the continuous flow part. So now we are working on the downstream products, which we expect to start sending samples within the next six months time frame. So this we can expect by end of 24 or early 25. And that should be the time when we should also be ready with our continuous flow equipment in place. So the timing would be more or less precise for us. Oh, I was just asking because considering that uh, we are speaking of uh, rupees 8 to 9 billion kind of a revenue by 25. So I just wanted six. to understand are we being more conservative on the revenue guidance? See, basically, I don't expect everything to go at a full scale in next two years. See, when a customer says, let us say, for example, a potential of 1,000 metric tons, we don't anticipate to reach 1,000 metric tons in a span of two years. So it would be a gradual ramp up in next three to four years' time frame. So, of course, the opportunity is much larger in terms of revenue. But we are looking at 25, 26, then this, I would say, is a very fair number to estimate. Though it is conservative, but it is a very fair estimate to put in place. And in any case, we'll not have enough plant capacities to go beyond that. So for that, the Greenfield project has to be developed. 
and then only it can take us further beyond 900, 950 crores revenue. So, and to have that greenfield project, let us say, assuming from today, will any case require 30 months to have that in place? Got it, got it. And uh, Chintan, on the margin side, last time when we did 500 uh, uh, plus million in the revenue on the HDA side, uh, we did a better margin in excess of 22%. Do you think on a steady state when we go back to, say, uh, with the solvent issue getting resolved, uh, do you expect we uh, the company to go back to this 22% kind of a margin? We definitely expect to do that. Got it. Got it. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. That's it from my side. And to even overcome this uh, uh, solvent, uh, you know, the fluctuating prices in this certain solvents which we are using on a very large scale. So as I had mentioned uh, last quarter, we successfully implemented a technology where we could recover and reuse one of our lab solvents by which potentially we will reduce an effective usage of about 800 metric tons a year for this particular solvent. And now uh, in this quarter, we have successfully run trials to uh, recover and reuse our second largest solvent, which is in place. And this could also potentially have an impact of about seven to 800 metric tons a year consumption. So instead of having to dispose of that solvents after use, we'll be able to recover, reuse, at the same efficiency levels as a fresh solver. So that is the technology has been working very well for us. Fair enough, fair enough. So, so probably Q1 of FI24, we will be back to that normal margin run rate what we were doing. Yeah, but as of today, we have only one system in place which can run one solvent at a time. Uh, with our this capex plan which is getting over and starting uh, trials so that is when we will start so by mid of february we will have the second system in place which is already installed at this new plant so then we can simultaneously effectively recover and reuse both the large volume solvents from the garage plant Fair enough. And have we started working on the new plant uh, i guess we have acquired a large land in a non SEZ uh, have you started the process of getting the EC approval and all those things? EC, we expect to have EC in place in probably next two months time frame. So most of the groundwork of EC is done. So we expect to have this in place by March of 23. And internally also we have started you know, applying designing concepts of how this plant should be and what kind of uh, infrastructure we want in place. So all those discussions have already begun. No, because I, I thought you said it will take 30 months. So it, it looks like we are running far ahead of the 30 months. No, no, definitely because see, it's a greenfield project. So big, once we have EC, only then we can break the ground. So post, you know, completion of this existing infrastructure going on, once we are free from that, then we actually start seriously you know, designing uh, parameters for what kind of infrastructure precisely we need at the new location. So all those discussions have primarily begun, but the serious talks I presume should happen from mid of February onwards. Got it, got it. Uh, thanks, thanks for all the answers and uh, best of luck for the coming quarters. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nirali Gopani from Unique Asset Management LLP. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I just wanted to share my thoughts on the margin side. Uh, so in the last call, uh, we had mentioned that you know, we are not passing the uh, energy cost and the freight cost and we are bearing this cost to maintain the long-term relationship that we have with our customers. So uh, my concern is how will we deliver on the margin? Because this this quarter, uh, this chemicals and other uh, raw materials that you know the price increase. So if you can just share some thoughts on this. There are multiple factors associated to that. So one of the good part is that freight costs has started coming down from early December. So that is one very good part. Uh, so wherever we have not passed on the freight increases, we will have. Uh, you know, uh, leverage in terms of margin in those cases. 
uh, again, the solvent prices have started to kind of rationalize. So we have seen a sharp peak in certain solvent prices, and then we have seen a drop in solvent prices beginning from December as well. And this seems to be a continuous process, and now solvent prices are kind of coming down to their normal level. That is one very good aspect because see, when you calculate the cost of the product or you negotiate the product pricing for a large volume product to a customer, typically your pricing formula normally involves only the key raw materials. Right? So the commodities which you use, for example, let us say you are using caustic somewhere to maintain your pH standards or certain acids or stuff like that, for example, or the solvents. So these are all kind of, you know, uh, ancillary uh, requirements to the main process. So this normally don't become a part of your uh, pricing protocol with the customer. And unfortunately, the raw material prices more or less, except for Vomin is one exception, most of the raw material prices remain pretty much stable, whereas this commodity and solvent prices just shot up by probably more than 200% in so many cases which had a definitive impact. Now with this prices of solvents at least coming back will be a big reprise for us. So with this, we we are pretty confident that we'll be able to again recover our margins back without actually going back to the customer for a price increase. And we have very important customer base uh, coming out from uh, adversely impacted uh, foreign currency zones. So typically the Eurozone and the Yen. And they have seen a sharp appreciation in their currencies and which made it pretty difficult for them since they were import dependent for certain products and particularly for our SDAs as well. So their cost was shooting up like anything. So it was definitely a goodwill gesture from our side as well. Uh, based on their request, we would have liked to support them. It's a long-term relationship we are looking at and building up a good strength a uh, strong relationship with these customers for a long term. So it was also kind of a moral responsibility from on our part uh, to kind of absorb if it is possible. So we had taken that. And they have always supported us in our past uh, issues. Whenever we had pricing issues, they have been upfront in supporting us. So now it was a time for us to step up and support them, and we did that. Right. Actually, so the disappointment is because in November we are guided for like the H2 margins will be 20 to 22%. And the difference than what we have reported and what we had guided is, is pretty huge. So largely the disappointment is on that side. Um, we will not disappoint you post April, that is for sure. Uh, and see, uh, certain short term sharp price movements are always very difficult for any manufacturer to handle. If you go through my list of products, a lot of products are based on bromides and the bromine chemistry. So a very sharp movement in a very short time of span of time. Uh, I mean, typically it was roughly about a 20 to 25% spike in bromine prices, which was, you know, came as a big surprise. And this is where, you know, it became difficult for us to manage certain things. But once we know that these are the stable uh, high price uh, mechanism, then you have an opportunity to go back to the customer and negotiate for the next quarter. Right. Typically, pricing are governed more or less on a quarterly basis in most of the cases. So any sharp movements during the quarters always becomes difficult to manage. So sometimes you are at a gain, sometimes you are in a tough spot. So this quarter we were in a tough spot, unfortunately. Right. So Q4, the margin would also be in this range, or we we'll see around 20% of EBITDA margin? We should see a couple of percentage gain in terms of EBITDA margins in Q4. Because still we are, so this quarters we already have certain orders in hand, which will clear up our old SDA inventories in terms of finished food as well as in process material. And we will be completely done with all the old inventories that we have been holding. So we may not have that significant margins of 20 to 23% in Q4, but this is what we expect to resume from Q1 of next year, actually. Okay, fair enough. And also my next question is on the guidance that you are giving for FI26. So in the last call, you had mentioned that this four new products uh, in pharma and agro side, they have a potential to reach 800 to 1000 crore in the next four years. 
so uh, am i missing something because uh, this yes, itself yes. is it is no no so this product set a full scale potential is at a thousand crores revenue but you don't achieve this in one year so it will be a gradual ramp up to that levels in next 3 to 4 years time frame and we will also require it will be too oxygen. conservative right not conservative it is very practical because i have only enough infrastructure in place where i can reach probably 850 900 950 crores at max then we will run short on the infrastructure so we will need a new plant to be able to achieve larger volumes and newer products to be uh, manufactured so that is what now we have seriously started considering and with the kind of markets that we have seen over last six months you know so it's little jittery so we are also very cautious in going ahead with our decision to that but probably we have no choice but we have to move ahead with that decision and uh, go for a new capex in a short, probably in the next couple of quarters is what we should definitely consider. Right. And so in the last question, you just mentioned that, you know, uh, the stable margin will go back to 22%, maybe in FY24. But can we go back to the earlier level of 25%, say, in a year or two? That, see, basically, see, even the issue when we say the drop in margins, so in, even if this quarter, if you realistically see, we have cleared a lot of our inventories rather than actually having larger volume of production. So once you have the rampant production in place, which is occupying your facilities, uh, probably 80, 85% in place, that is when you actually see a real uh, margin setting in. So again, the reason why I'm saying Q4 we will have some subdued margin is again because we are going to clear off most of the inventories and a lot of plant capacities would still remain idle. And that would not be the case from Q1 because then we have cleared all the backlog inventories and then we'll actually see a rampant production happening in place. So of course, when your plants start getting occupied beyond 80% capacities is when your real margin start to kick in. Most of the overheads, you know, a lot of overheads, though some of them kind of feel they are direct cost, but a lot of them, most most part of those direct costs are also kind of a fixed cost. So when your productivity goes up, that is where the cost starts getting distributed over various products, and that is where the beauty of margin set in. Right, right. And so just last question from my side. So you said that, you know, you will have to raise funds for the Greenfield KPEG. So will it be equity, assuming that you will have to bring down your stake also to 75%? That is that is probably the most relevant answer because we will be compared to dilute uh, uh, by next, uh, mid of next year. So that is definitely the ex option which we would like to explore. Great, sir. Great. That's it from my side. Thank you for answering my question. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Padma Raju Mati from SBI Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you for taking my question. I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir. Yes. So my first question is like out of our total SBSA, directly or indirectly, how much of that is dependent on China? I would say indirectly roughly about 40%, 40 to 50% is my best guess. I would, honestly speaking, I would not really know the geographies where the end product would be going. So we are the first in the chain. We make the SDA, my customer makes the zeolite, his customer makes the final catalyst, and then this catalyst goes to the chemical, uh, to the automobile company getting fit into the catalytic converter. So honestly yes, speaking, I would not know the answer precisely, but my best okay. guess would be roughly 40 to 50 percent dependence on the China market as of now. Okay. See, when we when we started producing and when we started getting approvals, uh, we were shielded from the U.S., Europe, Japan market because those approvals were already in place with my competitor. So we were left with, and that is where we also got the opportunity of, honestly speaking, is when the India and China market opened up. So. Probably 90 to 100% of the products eventually, you know, made using our SDAs are finding an applications in these two geographies. 
this geographical barrier should go away when we move from bs6 to bs7 so we are already in queue for bs7 approvals getting few approvals already in place some commercial supplies already started so bs7 will remove all the geographical barriers for us okay okay and my second question is on my, our uh, costing side so you so, highlighted sorry, sorry. Uh, Sorry. on the costing side cost yeah so you highlighted some of the solvents have shot up to us in last quarter or so so from the total sorry, cost perspective sorry, sorry again you are not clearly audible please repeat the question so uh, is it better now slightly better yeah so from the total costing perspective you mentioned the solvents have shot up to us last quarter So, out of the total cost, this solvent would form how much portion, approximately? Roughly about. See, basically, the challenge is we are into high purity products, right? So, when you say solvent, typically is not a part of your product. It's not a part of your key raw material. It's an ancillary that you require to produce. But after one time use, your solvent gets contaminated with certain unwanted impurities. which because by virtue of we want to produce high purity substances we are unable to reuse these solvents so when i talked about that technology which we have now in place for one solvent and which now we have successfully established for the second solvent as well the key see this could be done by anyone but the key part in this technology is whether we can recover and make the solvent equally pure as we are buying fresh so that is what we could establish and we could have our final or the finished product with the same purity levels so that was the biggest challenge which we overcame so ideally speaking normally we would say about 8 to 10% cost or 12% cost is the solvent cost but when you are not able to reuse these solvents then this becomes a significant part of your raw material cost okay so the reason why i am asking is sir Uh, so the line one. for you sounds a little muffled. It's not very clear. Yeah. Uh, may I request you to please use your handset when you speaking, sir? Yeah. Is it better now? Yes. This is much much better, sir. Please go okay. ahead. So uh, the reason why I was asking this question is uh, out of the 800 bits uh, gross margin impact quarter on quarter, how much would you actually quantify to in inventory loss? i would have to work out that number precisely and i can give you that answer offline probably okay. tomorrow dotra okay. ji you can do that tomorrow yeah we can do that tomorrow okay last question from my side i think i missed the status on the flame retardants project can you throw some color there in regarding our commercialization yeah so here Uh, so now we have got uh, full scale approval from two customers now we are negotiating the price with them and we are awaiting we have four approvals still in queue so awaiting that so we'll start commercially producing them in this quarter the current quarter q4 and we then that would be to execute their uh, plant scale trial materials right so it would be a full scale trial supply that would happen to these two customers in in the current quarter and then we should see commercialization happening from q1 of 24 okay okay fine sir thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of yash shah from investec please go ahead uh, hi sir uh, am i audible okay. Yes, yes very much yes good evening yes yes good evening sir uh, sir my first question was uh, regarding margin itself uh, sir since uh, we have such high gestation period wherein we start from lab scale then pilot scale and then plant trials um very high gestation period so uh, are we already in talks with few of our uh, major customers to basically shift from uh, three months to six months campaign orders and uh, move to cost plus model since uh, the fluctuation in the solvent prices hampers our margins significantly so are all are we already in talks for that no no most of our you know the large customers business is already driven by a certain price model but usually 
solvents or the ancillary chemicals or the commodities never become a part of or not even the freight cost okay uh, so freight cost or packaging material cost or the solvents or the commodities don't become a part of that pricing formula usually the most the key raw materials is where it becomes a part of the pricing formula so whenever you have such severe adverse movements in solvent pricing only then we are able to go and go back to the customer and request for price increase so even as of today you know despite of having this experience of last 8 8 9 months of having uh, adverse uh, pricing cycles in solvents or commodities still it's not a fair practice to include them uh, in a part of your pricing formula so usually the pricing is governed by your two or three key raw materials which contribute let us say about 60% of the rmc total rmc and that is what is the negotiating platform which is set and these prices can be you know uh, probably governed or monitored on some international uh, platforms where it's a fair play for us as, so it's not that i go and say that the price has increased for example the bromine price then it is visible at most of the uh, exchanges chemical exchanges or uh, prices is fairly available you know globally that what is the price increase in bromine kind of stuff you know so still solvents or the commodities are not part of the pricing formula and probably it's never going to be that way okay. and not with us only probably with most of the chemical companies uh, specialty chemical companies yeah right so the only way we can mitigate that is by acquiring technologies like how we've done uh, for the exactly. two key solvents the large solvents right understood sir so my, uh, another question was regarding the psc segment now if you see quarterly uh, the segment looks under pressure uh, from which uh, end user industry did we face this pressure or is it just cyclical in nature it is not actually cyclical uh, the we are uh, second supplier to one of, one of the uh, there are two key products where we have seen some impact one of them is a uh, us customer into pharmaceutical segment which have postponed their orders up to Jan uh, up to april so the november december orders have been postponed up to april and there is another large agrochemical customers who had some pending orders from their key chinese supplier this containers got stuck because of this lockdowns and stuff so unfortunately all these containers about six or seven containers of product hit the indian shores at a time in october so then they had to actually stop buying from us in november and december which has again come back to a normal pace so our supplies as well as our competitors chinese competitor supplies are now streamlined so now we are seeing a kind of a streamlined business again back from january understood so it was just the time in phenomena that was causing this uh, little up and down okay okay so we can expect to be uh, basically the revenue to go back to uh, 40 40 45 crores in uh, h1 fi24 right that understanding will be right sir hello perfect yeah 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 okay okay uh sir my next question was uh regarding electrolyte salts um mm -hmm. in the previous quarter we had mentioned that we were we had gotten approval from one customer which was from super capacitor batteries and we were in mm -hmm. talks with another customer for energy storage if i'm not wrong um okay. sir has the yeah so have we has there been any kind of uh, uh, update on that part so the energy storage customer we have already supplied the plant trial material to them and we expect them to run these products into their energy storage systems and we should have a feedback in probably next couple of months and see basically they have been awarded certain projects by the u.s government to set up certain energy storage plants uh, across multiple locations in u.s and they are also running their trials uh, with whatever the u.s energy department or xyz and they expect their approvals to be in place from july or august of this current year so post that they will have these projects in place and this should start to roll so we are expecting very good business from this customer post approval probably from september onwards and the second customer where we supplied the electrolyte salts which got fortunately approved and they actually liked the quality and they insisted whether the can actually help them to supply the electrolyte solution 
So it's the same customer where we got approval for the electrolyte salt for the supercapacitor application is where we have now successfully supplied the electrolytic solution. So this is the first time where we have successfully made and achieved the desired quality of this electrolyte solution. So until now we have only been into the salt areas, never made any kind of solutions. But this is the first time where we have now successfully produced the desired quality of the electrolyte solution. And based on that, now we have a request from yet another customer in Far East where they are also looking for uh, the products from Tatwa Chintan in the solution form, not the salt form. Right. So as it is, we had expertise in the salt. Now mm -hmm. all we need is yes. solvent and it is quite Yeah, solvents, additives, and a super... Uh, I would say a super special handling systems where, you know, because we are talking of absolute dry products. We are talking of moistures below 10 parts per million, which is, you know, even if you let it expose for five seconds to the atmosphere, then these products will not meet the quality requirement. So that is the kind of systems we have already uh, uh, successfully deployed on the pilot scale. And now we are working on converting this into a plant scale because we are expecting the once we have this approval of the pilot material which we are recently supplied and we are expecting to have a plant scale trial order for about 8 to 10 metric tons of this electrolyte solution but we don't have the necessary infrastructure in place as of today and we are working in that direction right uh, that was going to be my next question sir right now say in sda we have about uh, four products which are mostly in approval stage, which are in lab and pilot scale, right? Uh, so, mm -hmm. so, 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 so do we have it in uh, electrolyte salts and SDA as well, a couple of products. Uh, mm -hmm. As we are going to basically commercialize new R&D facilities, so that will accommodate the uh, newer products where you want to work on or the newer products wherein you will get uh, a request from the customers. So don't you see uh, this becoming a challenge when you have to convert it to a plant scale uh, from lack of infrastructure? because we targeted uh, to basically raise money after a couple of quarters and then the commissioning will start which will take about greenfield expansion will take about another year or so eight to ten months so not uh, that was for like sdas reason. not for sdas or the uh, electrolyte salts that is not a challenge we have enough capacities already in place the challenge is only for running the newer type of chemistries particularly the continuous flow chemistry that we are talking about so we will have enough space in our current plant location, the existing the H plant location where we are. So we have enough space probably to just include two continuous flow chemistries at a full scale. 